How's it going? Welcome to the video. My name is Jean, spelled like Jean, and this is going to be a little bit different of a video. I do CrossFit, I like to talk about CrossFit, but I also like to talk about the news that breaks in this space that we exercise and work out in. And the biggest news today is that the CrossFit Games finally released their 2019 rulebook after one sanctioned event has already come and gone. And so it's a big deal because now we kind of know what to look forward to coming into 2019 season. It's clarified some things, but it's also kind of like, we kind of already knew some of this. So it's kind of common sense, but it's also like you can see they're, they're working through it and now we're working through it as we watch it. This clip that you're gonna watch is with me and my brother and we actually just talked about it on the Work For Change podcast. And instead of making a whole different video for it, I figured I might as well link it to this. It's a good time, it's a fun time, it's informative, it's fun, it's family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> it's all the things yeah. so um, it also give you superpowers. It'll give you superpowers. Yeah. Uh, yep True. It is a uh, crypt Kryptonian. No, no, no. <laughs> that, that's the opposite of superpowers <laughs> That takes superpowers away from Superman. It is uh, animantium okay. <laughs> okay It's basically like a radioactive spider. There you go It's a radioactive <laughs> spider that you are now gonna watch Let me know in the comments below what you think about the rule books what you think about the podcast If you're not already subscribed feel free to go subscribe. I'll, I'll have a link there or watch it on iTunes or listen to it on iTunes and all the other things. Cool. Thank you so much. I hope you enjoy. So um, about an hour ago, the CrossFit Games just dropped the new rule book for the 2019 season. Ah. Now, this is a big deal because they made a lot of changes that I don't think they were aware of. One person in the company, Greg Glassman, mm -hmm. was like, I'm over this. Yeah. Let's switch it up. And then CrossFit spent about a year. Well... No. Six months. Six months. Trying to recover from that. Well, yeah, it was crazy because all these announcements and then people had all these questions and they, there was no answers to the questions. And straight up, like, CrossFit turned off their commenting on Instagram. Yeah. They, well, and people were scared. Like, it was, yeah. like, I can only imagine being an athlete. I mean, we've and we've been able to talk to some athletes, which is really cool. Like, what would be going through your head at that point? Because it's like, it's like the Super Bowl, you know, being like, hey, this is going to be different now. Yeah. How? Nah, I don't know. We don't know. <laughs> and then, like, the preseason first, starts. Yeah. And they're not even the first, like, the first game of the week. Yeah. And they're like... We yeah, we don't know what the Super Bowl's going to be like know, yet. Yeah. There, there might be kangaroos running around. Who yeah. knows? Who knows? So they finally released the uh, yearbook, <laughs> the rule book, and I actually have not read any of it because I was editing a video and I was like, I need to finish this video. So Jean actually read it. So I, I was engorging myself <laughs> on a bowl of Chipotle. <laughs> Um, <laughs> and oh, sure, that was nice. Yes, it was delicious. And I was reading the rule book and mm -hmm. just basically taking notes. What they did was really cool is in the rule book, they like highlighted in red, like new, 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 That's nice. new. Yeah. So then I was like kind of like scrolling through some stuff and then like reading a lot of it. So to start this podcast off, I know we, we have a lot of people who don't do CrossFit and we're not going to bore you. Yeah. But we do want to talk about some major changes that are happening within our fitness. Yeah. Space. I mean, we care about it. So we're going to talk about it because it's our podcast. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Okay. So what? Yeah. Are there like main things? Main like how do you get to the games? Is so that change let's at all? do that. Let's talk about that. The first way you get to the games is going to be from the CrossFit Open. Okay. So the CrossFit Open is still worldwide, mm -hmm. obviously, um, but now you can qualify straight to the CrossFit Games if you are the fittest person in your country. That's a big change. Just just the one person. Top can't. person. Yeah. They are also going to allow for this year the top 20 people in the entire Open to go to the Games. Oh, okay. That, that's, I like that. So rank 1 through 20 worldwide goes to the Games. And then the national champion is what they're calling them. Mm -hmm. The national champion from each country that has at least one CrossFit box in good standing with HQ. That's like the phrase. Interesting. Okay. Will be able to go to the Games. So have I, – I don't know if you would know this answer, but – so even if, like you said, there's one, there's one box. So technically, this could happen where there's some crazy country. I don't, even, I don't even know, right? That only has one box. The person, the best person at that box, can make it to the CrossFit Games from the Open. If they RX every workout. Okay. So if you scaled during the Open at all, you don't get a spot. To the okay. Games. Yeah, I would you hope so. That yeah. makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to RX. You must RX every single workout to qualify for the CrossFit Games. Now, there are people who have dual citizenships. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what happens to them? Before the Open, they choose what country they want to be a citizen of. 
And then as soon as the Open closes on that first week, after the first workout, whatever country they declared is the country they're going to. So a lot of people... Um, a lot of people criticize Lauren Fisher because she moved to Dubai. Mm-hmm. People are like, she's just trying to become the fittest female in, in United Arab Emirates. Like, that's not fair. She doesn't have a citizenship to Dubai. So even though she's oh, living in Dubai. Okay. So you ha- have to be a citizen. You have to be a citizen of, of ah, that country. Okay, that's good. I like so that. So that is good. Because like now that. people can't just like move random and be like, oh, I don't know. I, yeah. I just happened to be there. Um, Lauren Fisher's lucky because she just made it anyway because her team won. Um, oh, yeah. She's but like for anyone else anybody else that. yeah if they have that was a big joke that everyone was making yeah. like like <laughs> jacob hepner was citizen saying, genovia citizen genovia which isn't a real place but yeah but still like that was a, a lot of people were joking like, i'm gonna move to madagascar or yeah whatever. exactly so that can't happen so that that's can't good. happen like you that. have to be a citizen okay. and if you have dual citizenship you have to choose yours declare it before and then you also have to have proof of citizenship okay so question the first thing that comes to my mind again i don't know if you know the answer but okay say you do make it but you have no business being at the games. Is there, uh, is it just you, so you're just at the games now? Yeah, I mean, if you RX every workout and you're the fittest person in your country, yeah, you get to go to the games. However, the rumor is that Dave Castro, or Dave Castro and Greg Glassman are going to, the first day is going to be a huge elimination Yeah, that's what I've heard too. So you have to decide, okay, I live in Zambonia or whatever, <laughs> and it h- costs three thousand dollars one way to go to the games. Uh, most likely, I'm going to get eliminated in the first day. I have to find a hotel. I have to find food. I have to find all that. I have to pay for my coach. I have to whatever. Oh, okay. Is yeah, it worth me? That's going? a good point. Because yeah, they're not going to pay you to go. Yeah. Um, Is it worth them putting all that money to get disqualified on the first day of yeah. the games? Um. So then, like I said, the fir- the top twenty are going to make it. They will be backfilled if the person declines. So um, if the pr- if number nineteen is like yeah I can't I'm injured yeah, yeah. Or something so then number twenty one will get it okay that's good same thing if the f- top people in the nation um, yeah if the person declines or if they're a national champion so it'll get backfilled if one seven thirteen and fifteen are individual champions of different countries then oh, it'll be like twenty one okay. twenty two twenty three okay, twenty four I get that. That makes sense. It will not be backfilled if one of the top people also win a sanctioned event. Mm. So Matt Frazier won Dubai. So now it's a competition for the top 19. Yeah. He's already taken a spot out of the men's open field. And doesn't, yeah, doesn't he have to, you have to compete in the open now too, right? Is that true? No. Oh, okay. I thought it was. Yeah, I thought it was too. But what they said was, we'll get further into it, but basically they're going to reserve four spots. For whoever Greg feels like inviting, <laughs> at all, anyone. <laughs> hey Greg, um, yeah, I hope. <laughs> so I we love CrossFit. Yeah. <laughs> we'd really we, bring the attendance we, up. Yeah, I have a really big following. I almost have ten thousand. <laughs> so, so if you really want to see someone struggle, yeah, <laughs> so, so they could do it. Like I've always thought at the Olympics, they should have. The athletes, exactly. and then a normal person, they so really you can <laughs> see how fit they are. I so know. that can be us. <laughs> that can be us. <laughs> Just every yeah. event. You can see us cry on the field. They'll, be l- so they'll literally be like, all right, event one is max snatch. John's going and <laughs> fails 185. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's, a min- there's a minimum that you have to do, and John can't even deadlift that. <laughs> John seems to be doing snatch grip deadlifts. I don't know yeah, what's going we, on. Uh, yeah, we don't know what what is going on? <laughs> we do know that at one point, Sean mentally broke down, ripped off all his clothes, and started running, running around naked. <laughs> the pressure must have been too great. <laughs> somehow, so, somehow he got a razor. Now he's shaving his beard off. I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> crying. Just crying in the corner. <laughs> All he did was 10 pull-ups. I don't <laughs> <laughs> now he's asking now he's asking Catherine Davis' daughter for her number. <laughs> but she just <laughs> <laughs> uh. ben, ben Bergeron's come onto the field attack with <laughs> <laughs> there just seems to be an all-out brawl on the floor. <laughs> Everyone <laughs> against John. <laughs> and John and John seems to just be laughing at his brother. <laughs> well, John, John David's vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is going to be great content. 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> so um, that's called the at-large bid. And four people, whoever they decide they want to go, it's basically going to be like the best of a different sport. Like, oh, you know, okay, that would be cool. Like, so, like, people are always like, whoa, CrossFitters are stuck at calisthenics, mm-hmm. you know? So they're like, all right, bring a calisthenics guy on. Let him crush everyone mm-hmm. and see how he does on the competition floor. You know what I mean? You <laughs> bring NFL, like, quarterbacks or something like that. Yeah, like, you know sweet. what I mean? Or, like, yeah, some, like, some other form of training, some other form. So that um, – but what they said was seating at the games. So who's going to be in the first heat, second heat, third heat, fourth heat is going to be based on your position in the open. I always thought you had to do the open. That's what I understood. That's what it was relayed to me. Mm-hmm. However, they said – if you did not compete the open, you were automatically in the last heat. In the last heat mm. during the first event for seating, like or whatever. So, I mean, I mm. think that might be though for those, you know, go hards or whatever, the at large bid who like they're like just come in, you're gonna be in the last heat. No one wants to watch you anyway. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> and so, um, but from the sound of it, it looks like you have to do the. I'm open. really interested to see who is chosen. Um. Yeah. yeah, I'm really interested. I'm just. I curious. wonder if it's like gr- the way Greg Glassman originally talked about it. It was like people who make fun of CrossFit. Oh, okay. Like that was how he originally brought it up. The way it's written in the rule book doesn't come across that way because we're probably trying to be more like yeah. PC. Of course, I I can almost guarantee the people that make fun of CrossFit if they actually got invited they would not do it. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't. I le- legit. I think if they invited me, I would be like. No, <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> I, I would 100% do it. I got to get Catherine Davis out of his number. <laughs> just kidding. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Hi, Sam. Yeah. <laughs> Sam is listening to this. I'm she kidding. Is 100%. Yes. Mm, can't wait to hear about that fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, next week, I'm going to be coming from my new home. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. Um, the doghouse. Yeah. <laughs> um, so then a couple other things, and then we'll end it off. Age, people were afraid about masters and kids. Yeah, because yeah, there was yeah. no That's rules. There was nothing about them. They're still doing the same exact thing. So they're going to be doing the open. I figured that. Um, The top 200 are going to be allowed to do the age group online qualifier. And then they used to take the top 20. Now they're only taking the top 10. So then, yeah. So it's going to be 10 people in the field of 16 to 17. 10 people in the field of 40. I think that makes sense. 44. You know, 35 to 39. Because, I mean, that 35 to 39 will be an interesting. That will be be an interesting one because that was definitely like the most, I would say, like out of all of the. Um, age group, you know, teens and masters, that was the one that people were paying attention to the most. And there's so many, like, not masters, but I guess technically they are. There are so many people who are retired but who are now in that age group, like Kalipa. Like, mm-hmm. I don't know if Fouché is. She, I think she's not there yet. But I don't think she's so. definitely not there yet. What am I saying? But there's a lot of people who kind of aged out that are now yeah. Yeah. doing more competitions, kind of getting back into the feel of it. So it's really cool. Um, okay. Now, really, last part, sanctionals. There's 15 sanctioned events this year. First place male, first place female, first place team. We kind of already know this. If first place is already going, like, so if Matt Frazier were to compete at Wadapalooza and he were to win, mm-hmm. it would go to the second place person oh, okay. at Wadapalooza. Okay. What can't happen is if Matt Frazier goes, wins at Wadapalooza, and Bjorkvin won Dubai... Like so I got second place at Dubai. If Matt Fraser was friends with him, he, he couldn't like, be no, like, "Well, I'm I want my Wadapalooza spot now. Let the second place spot go." Oh, to okay, you know what I mean. Like yeah, he, yeah. you have to go to the, the first, first one, one that you win. qualified at. Okay, that makes so, sense. Um, and then a huge controversial slash yay slash how's that going to work was there um, last year they announced that they were going to allow transgender to compete. Mm-hmm. Um, now that one is like there's so much emotion involved. There's so much involved there, but essentially. If you are a female and you want to compete as a male, you just have to prove that on some form of, not prove, but like provide governmental paper that you identify as a male. Mm -hmm. California ID or whatever ID, whatever. Like, just prove it. Yeah. And that's kind of like, okay, as long as you identify as a female for or a male as this long, like within a year or something... We can let you go. Yeah. It's much different if a male is identifying as a female. Okay. Oh, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. if a male identified as a female and all they need to do is prove was an ID, they would crush the floor. Yeah, yeah. They would literally just d- dominate and yeah. destroy everyone. So they have to have like a year's record worth of them cons- like um, Transitioning identifying. Yeah, yeah. Identifying yeah. as a female. Um, they have to have their testosterone checked. 
they have to have a like they have to submit a, a paper th- to CrossFit. Like they it goes through a lot more. So a lot of people were worried like what the heck? Like yeah. all a guy needs to do is be like no no no, I'm, I'm a girl. I'm a girl. Mm-hmm. And then just absolutely crush the field. And um they are doing to prevent that, which is that probably is what took them a really long time to like figure out because yeah. No other sport is doing this. Like CrossFit is like breaking boundaries with this like transgender are they i don't know yeah I, they're I like wouldn't be able to I oh have, my no, goodness I they're like watch any sports yeah they're like <laughs> they're like breaking boundaries with that yeah so it's <clears throat> it makes like, sense that it spent so much time trying to like figure that out yeah and, and my and thoughts like, on that is like i i like what they're like the way that they're doing that and honestly like if you were to think about it if you were somebody you know a dude that was like Say, like, the worst case scenario, right? a dude that was, like, trying to just say he's a woman so he could crush everybody. Like, I think that, like, the, like that actually happening is so low. Because, yeah. like, people, like, could you imagine being that person? Like, you would just be hated by so many people. And, like, you would turn into, the, like, that would be who you are to the whole CrossFit community. Yeah. And so, like, I doubt that that, that worst so, like, case scenario some, that people were someone saying. Someone maliciously doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Like, doing it to almost make a joke out of yeah. it, right? Yeah, yeah, Like, I, I know that I see where people are coming from with their, like, being scared that that might happen. But, like, the actual reality of that actually happening is very small, I think. And so, I mean, I think that it's it's good. I mean, we'll see. I I. Honestly, I would doubt that even in the first year this year that anybody would. Yeah. Uh, I mean, but who knows? I don't know. I don't. I have n- absolutely no idea. And I mean, more power to you if that's something that you want to do. I don't know. Like, I don't have much thoughts on that. Yeah. To be honest I mean, it, with you, it's such a it's such a new frontier. You yeah. know, it really is. Like, just first of all, like CrossFit opening up the doors and being like, let's figure this out, and like kind of being trailblazers in that is mm-hmm. huge. Um, but also just how to navigate with that because looking on like Twitter, looking on Instagram where they said we finally, like we posted the rule book, it was like immediately people went to the transgender rules. Oh, really? And that was immediately what they were like, what about this? Mm-hmm. What about this? And it's like, ugh. and like, it's, it's annoying because no matter like what, no matter what happens with change comes complaining, mm-hmm. like without fail, 